What's going on, guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode. Coach Joe here with Heartletics.com, and this is going to be a really, really good one, um, not just for our members, but just anybody in general that's looking to stay consistent during the holidays. You know, before we hit recording, uh, recorded, uh, you know, we kind of talked about uh, just the fact that, you know, during these times of the holidays, it's hard to be consistent. It really is, especially with just the new year coming about. Everybody has that, oh, I'll get started after the holidays. And hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, this presentation just kind of helps everybody in terms of having the right mindset, in terms of filling up their cups. That way, they're the best version of themselves, whether it's summertime when they have the full motivation or whether it's, you know, the winter months when, you know, motivation isn't at a highest. So with that being said, let's um, let's go into a quick little screen share here and share with you guys this uh, presentation. Mark, let me know. Uh, can you see my screen okay? Yes. Cool. Let me go ahead and put this on full screen like so. Awesome. So before, once again, we started recording, you know, Mark, you and I kind of talked about the weather change. And then you kind of mentioned about, you know, the time and even about just the sunlight and everything like that. And there's a huge factor. And this is what I want a lot of people to just understand before we get into today's presentation is that anybody can start off, right? The, the, the competition, if you want to call it that strong, if you're looking at it like a boxer, you know, their first, you know, rounds were at the gate. Anybody can throw a variety of punches and have the most strength. But what happens? Eventually, they're going to drain all their willpower. They're going to drain all their stamina. And they're not going to be, you know, the best near those later end of the rounds. And that could really change the perspective of a fight, right? Somebody, if they don't have enough energy to keep their hands up, they could easily get knocked out and eventually lose that fight. The reason why we're making today's episode is because it's November and December's, you know, right around the corner. We don't want you guys to get knocked out. We don't want you guys to lose this fight in terms of filling up your cup. And um, it's a real thing, especially with, once again, just it's slowly approaching to the end of the year, the weather change. That affects me big time. And I'm somebody that has been working out and eating relatively healthy for quite some time now, right? And still to this day, I hate waking up knowing that I have to wake up 15, 20 minutes earlier brushing the snow off my car just to go to the gym, right? Like, I don't like that, right? But at this, at the same time, it's a great reminder that, hey, successful people, successful people do what they have to do, whether they feel like it or not. You know, motivation always gets you started, but discipline will always keep you going. And that's why in today's presentation, we really want to go over just some habits, right? To help you on your fat loss journey, to help you with your mindset, everything like that. Uh, Mark, before we dive into the overview um, why don't you go ahead and kind of share with everybody in terms of just like what it kind of affects you? You know, you mentioned about like yeah. the time. Yeah, absolutely. For me, and it's, and it's a challenge every year. Um, something about when it gets dark early and then when we change the clocks and all that, it just affects me mentally. Um, and it's interesting, you know, I find it, it it's dreary. It, it pulls at my motivation. Um, just something about that lack of sunlight. But I did happen to hear a piece uh, on the radio um, just the other day about how, our circadian rhythms are really important and how it's not just a mental thing. There's science behind it, that that change in sunlight and sleep patterns and everything, it does throw us off you know, on a physical level. So what I've been trying to do, you know, is apply all the things that I've learned since being a part of Heartletics to try and combat that, you know, and, and I think that's uh, an important part of what we do is learning how to, you know, fight against that kind of trend towards negativity, depression, you know, anxiety, et cetera. Yeah, dude, that's perfectly sad. You know, even though we're we're considered what health and fitness coaches, I think people often forget that like health isn't just your physical health, it's your mental health as well. And that's one thing that we focus so much on is like that mindset, a different perspective on things. This is going to be just a quick little overview in terms of what we're going to be going over for today. For starters, you know, what is consistency? We use that word a lot. Uh, we got the wristbands, right? Consistency is key, but it's like, what does that actually mean? And then second is like, how do we become more consistent? And that's going to be different for everybody. Um, if you're somebody from the outside listening, whether it's on Facebook Live or YouTube, you know, our whole thing about Heartletics is, you know, 
let's not just give a man a fish and feed him for a day. Let's actually teach somebody how to fish and feed him for the rest of his life. So when we talk in terms about how to become more consistent, understand this, that I might say some things that work for me. Mark might say some things that work for him, but I really want you to just put yourself in terms of like, what is going to work best for you? That's for your lifestyle, but also in alignment with your goals. And then we're going to be going over, you know, finding the best habits for you. And then the, lastly, the holiday cheat sheet. And this is going to be, uh, once again, just a really good strategy to know and to, you know, whether it's anniversaries, holidays, uh, anything like that, you know, special occasions, how to have the right mindset and how to have the right formula to just, uh, you know, once again, stay consistent with getting you to where you're trying to get to in terms of your goals. Mark, let's talk about consistency, brother. Yeah. So you can see here, it says consistency, the ability to replicate a process or activity with the same level of quality over and over again, the adherence to the same principles in a steadfast way. Consistency is what transforms average into uh, excellence. But briefly, consistency is your commitment to performing a certain action over a period of time. And when you're consistent, you build daily habits um, and those bring your goals to fruition, right? You're doing these for a reason to get somewhere, but you have to focus on those individual steps. So um, it's about not relying necessarily on other people's prompting. So yes, we want to back each other up and help each other be consistent, but it's also about learning to have that kind of inner voice that, um, you know, keeps you consistent. And you have to perform these habits with some sense of regularity, but it doesn't mean, right, just rigidly doing something without thought. It's kind of like when we talk about in you know in the sense of the workouts right that we talk about switching up those workouts periodically because if you do the same thing without putting thought into it right you're not actually making like in the case of workouts you're not making a muscle mind connection you're kind of just going through row it's the same thing with the habits that you do you want to be actively present while you're doing them um and not just mindlessly repeating something right there's got to be kind of an intention there and by repeating these actions like mindfully um you're able to learn, grow, you learn from them. They build that sense of your personal responsibility and you become accountable for your own actions. Um, but what do you gain, right, from being consistent like that? What does it actually do? It makes you reliable. It makes you cultivate trust, right, within yourself and others by showing, right, we always talk about leading by example, you're showing that you're consistent. It unlocks mastery, right? So by, you know, committing to these, um, you know, practices, these habits, you're learning to get better at what it is that you're practicing each time. It builds accountability and it ensures that, uh, you know, you get noticed. It basically just builds towards that two point or three point version of yourself that we're always talking about. Yeah. There you go. Consistency is key, right? We always say it. Yeah. Um, did you want to go into the quotes? Yeah, absolutely. So um, these are a couple of quotes that, you know, I pulled, you know, that relate directly to, um, you know, this topic. And this is, uh, you know, from The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Success isn't always about greatness. It's about consistency. Consistent hard work leads to success. Greatness will come. Yeah. Uh, Tony Robbins, right? Um, it's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives. It's what we do consistently. So again, that that reoccurring process that you put your mind to builds that new you. And then, of course, Bruce Lee, right? Uh, Long-term consistency trumps short-term intensity. So it's about, you know, repeating that process daily. Yeah, yeah. I love Bruce Lee, too. He has so many great quotes. Oh, yeah. And then... um. For the members, right, that's tuning in. You guys know, obviously, these are the seven fat loss habits that we like to go over at Heartletics. Um, if you're somebody that's, once again, listening on Facebook Live or YouTube or the podcast, well, hey, these are the seven fat loss habits that we like to go over at Heartletics. It's very <laughs> simple, right? Very, very simple in terms of, once again, helping our members learn and educate themselves on how to fit in their favorite foods, how to lose body fat, how to do in a way where... It's sustainable. And most importantly, it fits in with their lifestyle. You know, anybody can cut out their carbs and lose some water weight, right? But the likelihood of somebody doing that for you know, two, five, six, eight, 10 plus years, right? And staying consistent with it, that's that's hard. That's very hard. I've failed at keto, you know, because of the fact that there's so many restrictions. And in doing so, it's like, that's why we want to make sure that when we come together with creating a plan for somebody, it's something that goes along with these habits because this gives somebody flexibility. And you guys are going to see that, for example, here. So calories. And Mark, we'll just go back and forth with this one, brother. 
Um, with calories for me, right? In terms of, hey, the holidays are approaching up. It's it's hard to stay consistent. Tracking the calories isn't necessarily the the funnest thing, right? I'm somebody that's just going to be completely honest and add that to the equation. Um, Mark has a, a, a beautiful thing that he goes over with new members called Food Tetris. And I know a lot of you guys have heard that before. And in case you haven't heard that, so let's say you're just tuning in from the outside, looking in on today's presentation, keep this in mind. Everybody needs a certain calorie buffet. You know, uh, you have your calorie deficit range, you have your calorie maintenance range, you have your calorie surplus range. During some times, especially during the holidays, I mean, let's face it, if you're, you know, holiday dinner or something like that, splurging over on the calories, the biggest thing to keep in mind is giving yourself grace. That's the number one thing that I want you guys to understand when it comes to the calories. Some days you're going to be over, some days you're going to be under, that's okay, right? But here's the reality is, if you don't care at all, and you don't have the awareness of like what you're putting into your body, you're always more than likely going to be completely over. So my thing for you guys in terms of consistency for calories, at least, understand the awareness. Understand, okay, hey, I should probably be having, you know, more meats or, you know, more protein powders or more, you know, some that's higher in protein, lower in calories. It's an awareness, awareness to this. Mark, do you want anything to add in there before we go to macros? I just, you know, when you talked about giving yourself that grace, I think that's an important part of it. Um, a couple of members over the past week had reached out to me with, you know, um, menus for, for very special occasions, um, you know, asking for advice on, and I, I, I worded it this way. Um, I said, here is my advice for what are the best choices on these menus or sharing. But my actual best advice for you is this is like a once in a lifetime occasion, like eat what you want to eat and then go back to it the next day. You know, it, it, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, it's whatever, it, you know, it's not every day, you know, you got to give yourself some grace. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's right there. The, the best like thing that everybody should understand is that the next day you just get right back on track, you know, don't let one bad day turn into one bad week and then one bad week turn into a month and then a year and so forth. Right. That's when you let the bad wolf win. When it comes down to macros, this is very simple. And a lot of you guys understand this already, which I'm very proud of you guys, like, especially like the newer clients that's hitting their you know, protein goals immediately. And it's just that. In terms of macros, right? Macronutrients, you have your carbs, your fats, your proteins. Focus just on your protein. But here's hear me out, right? During the holidays, once again, you know, when you're going out to eat or having these big, you know, dinners or hey, on the days where Maybe you're not feeling good because I know personally with me right now recording this, you know, you get sick, you know, my immune system isn't the best in the, you know, the cold winter months. And so I get sick quite often. I always keep in mind, Hey, bare minimum of protein. That's it. And in case anybody doesn't know their bare minimum, it's very simple. You take your body weight, you multiply it by 0.8. Now at Heartletics, we always recommend at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight. But once again, Sometimes, like if you, let's say you're 250 pounds and you're trying your best to have 250 grams of protein, but you got sick, you don't really feel the best, that might be hard to do. But having maybe 200 grams of protein or 210 grams because you took your body weight, you multiply it by 0.8, that might be a little bit more realistic, okay? So keep that in mind. Mark, anything you want to add to the equation on that? Just, um, you know, protein, the reason it's so important, higher on the thermogenic food scale, it's going to help you burn fat and build muscle. And it's also going to keep you more satiated. So that's why we stress it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is a big one, the strength training. Okay. Some guys work out at the gym. Some guys work out at home with or without equipment. Everybody's different. Right. But regardless, just strength training in the bubble. Personally, for me, this is because once again, I started off, you know, talking about I hate brushing the snow off my car right? With a passion. I drive a, a 2012 Honda Civic, right? I don't have snow tires on this thing. I don't, it's hard. <laughs> like there's plenty of times where it's like, I got to wait 20 minutes just to have this thing heat up, you know? So this is a big tip that I want to share with you guys. Okay. Don't think that, you know, you need to work out every single day. And I know in my very early years of strength training, that was very hard for me to comprehend. Meaning, oh man, like, how could somebody tell me less is more? How could somebody tell me, you know, working out three days is beneficial than working out four days? It doesn't make sense at all. But hear me out. 
However you can structure this, right? So personally for me, I work out five days a week, but in those cold winter months, maybe when it's snowing outside, if I go to the gym three days, that's okay. If, because that's better than me not going to the gym at all that week. If I go to the gym four days, that's okay. So it's like most of the time, we are our own biggest worst enemies, meaning that we have these goals of, oh, I need to stick with this plan in order to achieve this set goal. So if I'm on this plan that's saying, hey, I should work out five days a week and I can't commit to that because of the snow or whatever the case may be, guess what? We immediately start thinking in our heads, oh, I'm not going to reach my goals because I can't stick to the plan. Guys, don't fall for that. That's the bad wolf. I'm telling you, right? Like strength training is very simple. It, focus on progressive overload if you can, right? And with that being said, train at least each muscle group twice per week. You could realistically do two full body workouts and be completely fine. In fact, if you mix two full body workouts with progressive overload and you're hitting the bare minimum of amount of protein for your body type, I promise you anything, you're not going to lose an ounce of muscle. You won't. Mark, anything that you want to add in? Yeah, just real quick. I mean, I dealt exact, I dealt with exactly like what you're saying this week because, you know, fighting off a head cold. And uh, woke up the you know the first day of it feeling really under the weather, and it was a challenge for to take my own advice, which is when you're feeling like that, you know, skip the the, the strength training for the day. And it was a challenge because you have that sense of like, well, you know, what am I missing by not doing it? But in the long run, you know, I think it's helping me, you know, recover faster by at least giving myself that one day to you know bounce back. Absolutely, let's talk about that real quick because I, I talk about that all the time, which is like what Mark just said. Hey, he took that time off to fully recover, okay? So sure, maybe his strength training wasn't there for that day or maybe the nutrition, it doesn't matter. He still took that time to fully recover. So if let's say if he's taking that time off away from the gym to recover and it takes some, let's say five days to recover as opposed to let's say if he was going to the gym and maybe just doing the best that he can but not really having the best energy and just kind of you know muster up and kind of go through the motions, He's not fully recovering. He's in fact putting himself under more stress by trying to fight off his sickness and work out on top of that. So what happens? It's double the duration now. So as opposed to five days of being fully recovered, now it's maybe 10 days. So it's like sometimes less is more. Sometimes you really have to listen to your body and take the bro science out of it, if that makes sense, you know? Um, let's go to NEAT, right? Non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is a big one that I'm really excited to kind of share with you guys and talk about just because when people talk about this and how we talk about it a lot, we assume this is the steps, okay? Which for sure, right? It's an easy way to track it. Hey, we recommend trying your best to get at least 10,000 steps in. It's a, it's a simple thing to just remind you to just get up and keep your body moving, but let's not put this in a bubble guys right? Let's not put this to just steps because I'll be honest with you. Um, Bill, if you're on here and you're listening to this right now, Bill has some bigger balls than me. That's for sure. Because he goes outside, he wears his winter coat, he wears his snow boots and his hat. Yeah. I'm inside with the heater and some hot cocoa, right? Like that's not my jam. I do not go outside. So with that being said, how do I still stay active? Well, I do my push-ups, I do my sit-ups, and fortunately for me, I have a heavy bag in my garage so I can easily hit that. So what am I saying here? Well, I'm still being active. That is the biggest thing. Somebody might come on here and say, yeah, but Joe, you're doing pushups. Isn't that strength training? To you, maybe, but to me, it's not, right? It's just me moving my body. It's just that my body's on the ground and I'm pushing the ground away from me. That's all, right? I'm just being active. I'm having fun with it. It takes probably, I don't know, less than two minutes to me to use my ab mat and do, you know, 20 sit-ups and 20 push-ups, and then go upstairs, eat some lunch, come back downstairs, you know, get some work done. And Hey, next thing you know, I got to get up, I go to the bathroom. I might do another set of push-ups and sit-ups. If I just do that periodically throughout the day, guess what I'm doing? I'm not only getting my steps in because once again, like typically on a, let's say a summer day, I'll block out that time to actually go to the park and get my steps in. But once again, the cold winter months, I'm not going outside. I'm a freeze baby. So by having these non-negotiables of like, what else can I do? It helps me stay more consistent as opposed to me saying, well, it's snowy outside. I can't get my steps in. So I'm just going to sit on the couch all day, right? That's not what we want you guys to have. We want you guys to have 
a sharp mindset. And sometimes having a sharp mindset is a flexible mindset, meaning, hey, you're you're kind of like MacGyver trying to figure out what is the solution, even though the circumstances aren't in my favor right now. I don't maybe have all the resources like a hot, warm summer day. Mark, anything that you want to add? Yeah, I mean, you know, we always talk about sustainability, right? It's all about, you know, something you can sustain. So I know for me personally, I'm in a similar boat to you lately where I've been doing other movements and maybe not as many steps just because time-wise, that's working better for me. Um, but what does that mean? That means maybe if I'm sitting to spend some time watching TV with the family, I've got the, uh, you know, the forearm developer going or, um, you know, getting up and down between commercials, you're doing some extra sit-ups and push-ups, just trying to get that movement in, you know, in time when I'm able to still, you know, make sure at the end of the day, I've had time with the family or whatever it is, you know, just keeping life sustainable. Yeah. I, dude, I'm really glad. Like when you said the forum uh, developer, I thought for some reason, like, I'm like, dude, I hope this dude doesn't say shake weight next. Oh, no, no. Shake weight things? <laughs> <laughs> I really hope this dude is not sitting on the couch using a shake weight. <laughs> There's so many memes about those. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's continue on hydration. So guys, I'll be, I'll be just completely honest, right? Hydration for me, um, it lacks big time, right? The cold winter months. And that's typically because if it's hot outside, I'm I typically end up drinking a lot more fluids, right? More liquids. If I'm going outside for a walk and I'm hot, I'm thirsty, right? You guys can see this is pretty simple habits. And the reason why it's because it kind of just goes hand in hand with anybody's lifestyle, but regardless, right, how to stay consistent during these, you know, cold winter months or whatever the case may be for the holidays, I like to say it like this. If I can't personally drink a gallon of water a day, I know for a fact I'm going to always drink at least a half a gallon. And personally, right, I know a lot of our members will buy on Amazon, right, a half a gallon jug or a full gallon jug, you know, just like what Coach Mark's holding up to the camera right now. These things are uh, literally the smallest things that has the biggest ROI, meaning that how our brains are designed as just men in general, right? Guys are very goal oriented. Okay. If there's a task, right? Like saying like, Hey, if I'm going to fill this up, let's make sure to drink it by the end of the day. There's more of a likelihood to finish that rather than if we never filled it up in the first place. So if you're somebody that struggles with hydration or you're somebody that just doesn't like to drink a lot of fluids during the winter time, like myself, that's okay right? Like maybe you're not drinking a full gallon, have some grace, say that's perfectly fine, but try your best to at least have a half a gallon. Because if there's one thing for certain, your organs need water, your muscles need water, like everything, your body's over 60% water, you need water, right? It helps your metabolism, helps with fat loss, it helps with just overall functions, right? More energy, more cognitive function, everything. Try your best to at least get in half a gallon. Mark, anything you want to add to that? Just having that jug, like you said, I mean, I'm not going to say it gets to the bottom every day, but having you know, it and making sure I fill it up every morning at least keeps me aware, keeps me thinking of it, and I'm getting closer to that gallon if I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. And then stress, right? Now, this isn't typically like a quote unquote, something that you can physically do, right? Like macros where you're hitting your protein or strength training or neat where you're trying to get your steps and stress is a little bit different. This is like the biggest one is for awareness when it comes down to stress. But I always like to say it like this for anything that's stress, whether that's relationships, whether that's home, whether that's work, whether that's stress on your body for injury, whether that's stress on your body because you're sick, all stress has a huge effect to spiking somebody's cortisol levels. Um, I, I did somebody's check-in and I told him right off the gate, you know, I'm like, hey, even though you're in prep, get your, get your, your sleep under control now right? Because that also affects your stress. Meaning that if you're eating properly and you're training properly, guys, if you're underneath a lot of stress and spiking those cortisol levels, it makes it very hard to reach the goals that you want. So when it comes down to stress, what I personally like to do is, and this is going to sound kind of strange, right? If you're hearing this, but I don't like to put too much focus and importance on the habits, so me and Mark started off by talking about grace. Give yourself a grace, right? We start off with calories, grace. Now we're getting to probably in my, uh, my opinion, one of the most important fat loss habits, stress. Because once again, you could be eating the right foods, training the proper way, doing all the right things on paper. But if your cortisol levels are spiked, 
it's going to be very difficult for you to lose body fat. So what is the best thing to focus on stress relief? Hey, let's not put too much importance on something. Now, I'm not saying go cold turkey and just throw in the white towel, drink some beers, turn on Netflix, and you got Cheeto dust all over your stomach. It's like, no, like, let's actually make sure that if we miss out on drinking a gallon of water a day, it's okay. If we hit, let's say, 5,000 steps on a day, it's okay. If we miss a gym session, it's okay. Nobody died because we didn't do any of this stuff perfectly. So stop putting so much importance saying that you need to show up each and every day. You have to do this. And if you don't do it to this ability, then you're a failure. Because once again, that stress is sometimes ourselves with these mind games, these stories that we tell ourselves, and we end up being the ones that shooting ourselves in the foot. Mark, do you have anything you want to add in that one? I think you hit the nail on the head. It's just, you know, we, we call it the hidden like factor, right? You've got to make sure you keep that under control because when those cortisol levels spike, it inhibits uh, your progress in all areas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what helps out also before we get to the recovery? Guys, I, I'm a big fan of, you know, 30 minutes of quiet time. I know if I say meditation, people will get like, oh man, Buddhist monk, like this is weird. <laughs> so I'm just going to say 30 minutes of quiet time. You want to pray for 30 minutes, right? Or break it up into two sessions of 15. You want to just put on binarial beats and focus on your breathing, two minute or two 30 or excuse me, two 15 minute sessions. But 30 minutes, realistically, 30 minutes, even if you did three 10 minute sessions throughout the course of the day and you focus on getting to the present moment, you focus on your breath work, you focus on things that you're grateful for, everything that you got going on with your life that's good, that's a blessing that you're thankful for, as opposed to everything that you're missing out on or that you don't have now, I bet you anything, you will have the best mental health ever if you start focusing on that. Recovery, recovery. this is a simple one, but also keep in mind what Mark said about being sick. It's a lot, right, when it comes to the importance. Uh, it's similar to stress where it's an awareness. Now, I will say recovery. This is also a big one when it comes to sleep. And we'll keep this very short, very brief. But, you know, they did a study. Guys that slept on average eight hours compared to five hours had up to 20% more natural free testosterone. So for the sake of time, get more sleep in. You know, like literally set a, a alarm or get your bedroom already or turn off distractions Turn off your phone, turn off the news, whatever, in a movie, you know, read a book if that puts you in a drowsy state, make some sleepy time tea. Um, you know, once again, get the room where it's nice and dark, get it in this place where if you understand that just by sleeping more can help aid you in getting one step closer, maybe two step closer to your health and fitness goals, by all means, do it. Now, let's get into the fun one, uh, the holiday cheat sheet. You know, and this is going to be some straightforward strategies uh, for the sake of time. I'm going to try to blitz through this. So let's dive in. First strategy, protein sparing versus fasting. Pros and cons to both. Okay. Um, I will say this for the majority of our members that we tell them, hey, focus on doing the protein sparing. They always see better results than if they were doing intermittent fasting. So keep that in mind, though. That's just data points. But both of these is a preference. If let's say you're doing intermittent fasting and your budget of calories is 2,000 calories, well, congratulations. When you show up to Thanksgiving dinner, you have 2,000 calories to play with. Now, on the downside is, hey, realistically, if you're putting a bunch of healthy food on your plates, it's probably not going to be like that at all. So that means that the 2,000 calories that maybe you're having, um, it's going to be very difficult to, let's say, hit your protein goal, okay? As opposed to over here, the protein sparing diet where you're filling up on lean protein, you know, smaller uh, or lower calorie protein options, protein powders, egg whites, lean meats, different aspects of that, right? Egg whites, Greek yogurt, stuff like that, right? Trying your best to hit your protein goal or getting close before that holiday dinner. So for the simple fact of, hey, I got 2000 calories over here. If I show up personally to Thanksgiving dinner, I want everything that's probably not good for me because I'm starving at that point, right? Eyes are bigger than the stomach or uh, yeah. And then protein sparing diet over here. If I'm conscious about trying my best to hit this protein goal, maybe I'm not going to have 2000 calories to play with. Maybe I only have, you know, 1400 or 1300 calories to play with for dinner. But regardless, if I filled up all day on protein, guess what? I'm showing up and I'm more mindful. I'm more aware 
because there's already food in my system. My eyes aren't bigger than my stomach. I'm actually going to go into this right with more of a an aid, more of a resource because I decided to at least focus on hitting this. And even, right, this is another data point. Just want to share this. Even if I'm over on my calories, by me hitting my protein goal, as Mark mentioned earlier about the thermic effect of food, I could be over on my calories, 500, 600, 800. But if I'm over on my protein or I'm hitting my goal, guess what? That's more of a, a benefit, right? You see better results as opposed to doing this one where you're not hitting your protein, okay? Now, with that being said, somebody could do intermittent fasting, hit their protein targets. Uh, they could be in a good sweet spot. They enjoy that. That works for, works good for them. Perfect. Kudos to you. But it's just, you know, preference here. So once again, strategy, you have protein sparing or fasting. Now, Tom, this is a good one for you. Uh, we mentioned about, hey, you don't want to go lower on the calories because, you know, the holidays and everything like this. This is something that I don't recommend that everybody just does every single week. But for certain occasions like this, it makes a lot of sense, guys. And that's to understand your weekly averages. Just like with your habits, it's kind of the same with your calories, okay? So let's just say, for example, 2,000 calories, seven days out of the week, we're looking at 1,400 calories for that weekly average. Well, if let's say that Saturday is your holiday dinner or anniversary dinner or birthday celebration, anything like this, let's just say that Monday through Thursday, we kept the calories exactly the same. Friday and Saturday, so the day before and the day afterwards, we shave off just 500 calories. That's very small to do and very sustainable and very easy to manage. But what are we doing? We're giving those 500 extra calories on both Friday and Sunday into Saturday, which means that this is now going to 3,000 calories. Once again, weekly average is completely the same. So holidays, birthdays, special occasions, have fun with it. You don't even need to go by these numbers by all means. If you want to go lower on Friday and lower on Sunday, so it gives yourself a little bit more wiggle room on Saturday, by all means, go for it. But just keep that in mind. And uh, once again, lastly, this is something we don't recommend every single week, but holidays, hey, have fun with it, right? We're teaching you, right? Remember, that's our mission at HeartLex. It's teaching you how to fish, not just giving you a fish. Mark, real quick, you want to break down the supplements? Yeah, let me try and do this quick because I know we're short on time. So um, the basic idea behind all of these, none of these are magic bullets. They're just going to help with your digestion and metabolism processes to kind of take out the extra stuff you might you know, have on the holiday. So chromium picolini, um, it plays a role in the way that your body breaks down fats and carbohydrates. It's got the nickname of like the traffic cop for digestion. So it's basically going to help send the carbs where they need to go, help send the fats where they need to go to kind of speed up, uh, you know, getting that excess stuff out of your system. Uh, glucominin, it's dietary fiber. Um, it's usually made from the root of the cognac plant. And what that's going to do is absorb water to form bulky fiber, which is basically going to help you with bowel movements. And it also slows the absorption of sugar and cholesterol in the gut. And then digestive enzymes are the proteins that your body makes to break down food, right? It's going to aid in digestion, you know, basically helping uh, you break down the nutrients uh, in the food that you're eating give you energy, help you grow, perform vital functions. Um, and, you know, it's breaking down the carbs, the fats, the proteins, helping your body absorb those nutrients. It's usually, um, these are usually um, based on the ones that your body naturally produces. So amylase to help break down starches and sugars, lactase for uh, sugar, uh, sugar and dairy products, lipase for fats, and protease to break down protein. Yeah. When you mix all these together, 30 minutes to 60 minutes before your birthday dinner, holiday dinner, special occasion, I promise you anything, like you're not going to be eating as much as you think you will be, <laughs> especially with the second one. I mean, it will fill you up, but it's a supplement. It's a tool. It's a resource, right? It's also manipulation. You know, once again, like eyes are bigger than stomach. I Italian household, right? Finish everything on your plate. You know, I, I, I that's who I am. So when I take this, it helps out so much, but then also knowing that, hey, when I do splurge a little bit by having the chromium, by having the digestive enzymes, my body is having that extra resources to digest everything to make sure that, hey, my protein's going over here. My carbs are going over here. My fats are going over here where it needs to be. Uh, the biggest thing that I want you guys as we wrap things up here, 
is to understand that just the mindset is the key. You know, uh, we started off and we're going to continue to finish this off with have grace for yourself. There's 365 days out of the year. If let's say there's 65 days that's your holidays, your birthdays, your days that you're sick, the days that you don't feel like showing up, um, their injuries, let's just map it up 65 days out of the year. Well, guess what? That means you have 300 good consistency days. Guys, that's the winning recipe for success is that mindset right there. Uh, just like Mark said about, hey, it's way better to just, you know, have grace for yourself and just pick yourself right back up the next day. You know, and I encourage you guys to not let one bad day turn into two, two days turn into a week, right? A week turned into a month. And that's why we focus so much on the importance of having community, right? Having our, you know, Heartletics, you know, groups where we're all come together, where everybody's facing these battles. It's just, it makes it a lot easier going to war when you have your brothers in arms next to you. That's all. Guilty versus forgiveness. Okay. So, Mike Hoffman, if you're listening to this, I mean, this was a huge one where that was like the uh, the most, I, I felt very proud, right, of a coach when you sent me over that message saying like, man, I went out, I had dinner with my wife, I didn't track anything, I ate whatever I want. The next day, I felt great. I didn't feel guilty. Like, I love hearing that. And I know a lot of guys struggle with that guilty for, uh, feeling, right? This is a time, guys, where honestly, you got to start being more um, just accepting responsibilities for your own actions. Meaning like, hey, if you splurge and went over, own up to it. But then what happens when you rip off the Band-Aid? You forgive yourself. Like, it's not like anybody died. So it's like, forgive yourself and just get right back on the horse. Like, yeah, it's going to suck. And yeah, it's not going to feel like the best. But I mean, do you want it to suck by you, you know, not being consistent and not doing anything, just stay on the couch for maybe one day or two days, or let's say, you know, two or three months, what is going to put you in a bigger grave? You know, what is going to be harder for you to eventually crawl your way back out of obviously sitting on the couch for two to three months. So it's like, have grace for yourself, forgive yourself and get right back on the horse. And that's why it's brush off the dust. You know, it's like, Hey, just like anything in life, it's it's not going to be this straight line to success. There's going to be lots of ups. There's going to be lots of downs. And that's what makes life fun, you know? And so once again, that's why we want to make today's presentation, just to kind of share with you guys a different perspective when it comes to not just training and not just nutrition, but overall mindset that during the holidays, you heard it from Mark, you heard it from myself, coaches, right? Guys that are plenty experienced, we still have times of struggles, you know, but regardless what helps us out the most is having the right mindset and knowing how to overcome those struggles. Mark, anything you want to say for uh, last minute? Just, uh, you know, it's the holidays. Enjoy yourself, but be aware of what you're doing and hit, it just bounce back the next day. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, as always, it's been Coach Joe with the Heartletics uh, Podcast. We'll talk to you guys next time. Peace out, Girl Scouts.